Hi, welcome to TDCAT Tech, where today I'm looking at the Alvoxcon A700. It's a budget condenser microphone. Before I go into probably a fair amount of detail about the microphone and its uh, functionality, audio quality, things like that, let's have a listen to some audio tests, because if you're looking for a microphone, how it sounds is incredibly important. So let's start with that. Welcome to this audio test of the Alvoxcon A700 microphone. When I perform these tests, I'm not going to do any kind of EQ on the mic in uh, post, and I'm not going to change the level at all. So when I kind of go different distances from the microphone, you can see what sort of difference it makes to the level of the mic and the recording itself. I'm just going to read a small passage from a book by uh, Joe Nesbo called Knife. This is audio test number one from a distance of 15 centimetres. Are you getting back together again? Oleg's voice sounded hopeful. Harry closed his eyes. Oleg had been angry when he found out that his mother had broken up with Harry, and because Oleg had been spared any explanation of the causes, his anger had been directed at Raquel rather than Harry. Audio test number two, 30 centimetres with the microphone on the desk. Are you getting back together again? Oleg's voice sounded hopeful. Harry closed his eyes. Oleg had been angry when he found out that his mother had broken up with Harry, and because Oleg had been spared any explanation of the causes, his anger had been directed at Raquel rather than Harry. Audio test number three, two centimetres from the microphone. Are you getting back together again? Oleg's voice sounded hopeful. Harry closed his eyes. Oleg had been angry when he found out that his mother had broken up with Harry, and because Oleg had been spared any explanation of the causes, his anger, anger had been directed at Raquel rather than Harry. All right, so they're the three main tests of the microphone, but let's just do uh, some testing, rotating the microphone and just using it off axis. So this is a cardioid polar pattern on this microphone. We'd expect it to work best from a roughly about kind of a 45 degree angle. So you can sort of drift off about 20 degrees to the left, 20 degrees to the right, try and keep it centered on the mic. But let's see what happens when we go to 90 degrees. So this is dead on on the microphone. And this is a test from 90 degrees to the side at about 10 centimeters. And this is a test from 180 degrees. Uh, so basically the rear, right, speaking into the rear of the microphone from about 10 centimeters. Back to 90 degrees and back to the front of the microphone again. Audio test number four is handling noise. So if we were gonna pass this microphone to someone else, how much of this noise so you can see there you can it sounds it sounds like although the metal construction you know you can hear the metal construction of the mic doesn't sound like there's actually much in there and there is a fair amount of handling noise that gets into that gets picked up by the mic but it isn't the kind of really hefty stuff that's going to cause any problems with you know level peaks or anything like that Audio test number five. Let's try typing on the keyboard that's on my desk, pretty much just behind the microphone. That's pretty decent. And audio test number six. This is a peak audio test. So if someone were to shout suddenly into the mic, let's see how it copes with it. This is a peak level test on the Alvoxcon A700 microphone, recording from a distance of pretty much zero centimeters and speaking loudly into the mic. Audio test number seven. This is the level, this is, I'm just, what I want to test here is just how much self noise, well, not really self noise because there's obviously noise from the background around my location here, but what kind of level we see on the mic when it's not actually getting any audio input. Very nice there. Right down at, very quiet indeed actually, but right down at minus 60, minus 57, minus 60 dB. Decent. That's very good. Hope that, hope they, uh, these audio tests help. 
Now back to the review and detailed look at the mic itself. All right, well, the price of a microphone can vary wildly. Names like Sennheiser and Neumann command really high prices for their microphones, not only because they're really good products, but also because they have a proven track record. Fortunately, though, if you are just starting out with recording you know, vocals or producing music or anything where you might need a basic microphone, we're in a position in 2019 where you can buy good quality audio for a really reasonable amount of money. In this case, the A700 is, at uh, time of recording this, $32.99 on Amazon. I'll put uh, links to the product in the uh, video description. They are affiliate links, and uh, if you use those links to, uh, to buy this mic, you will be supporting the channel. Thank you for that. If you want to just go to Amazon and look for it, that works too. So the Alvox... A7, uh, Alvox Con A700 is really as simple as it gets. It's a USB condenser mic and it just connects to a PC or a Mac and is ready to go in seconds. It just becomes an audio device, an audio input device, and you just select that device uh, in whatever software you're using and you record to it that way. That's straightforward. Firstly, I just want to talk about audio quality. So whatever you heard there and whatever you made of those audio tests, well, you can probably make up your own mind as to uh, whether you uh, approve of the audio quality or not. But overall, for the money, the mic has really rather good audio quality. It's got it's got excellent audio quality. The mic actually has a kind of, um, if you look at the frequency response across the microphone, it has a kind of six, about a 6 dB boost, peaking at about 10 kilohertz. And what that does is it gives it a really nice, sweet treble sound and uh, that's really nice i think most people find that quite appealing as long as it's not too harsh they find it quite appealing and it works really well for vocals probably for uh, acoustic guitar as well uh, it means you don't have to do any sort of additional eq on vocals further down the chain now depending on how you're using and how what you want from a microphone that might be a good thing or a bad thing but for most people who would buy a microphone like this i think that would be a good thing uh, i don't think this is going to be a microphone for any sort of highest uh, high sound pressure level work so you know you wouldn't want to use a mic like this on a kick drum or something like that it's just not suitable for that sort of thing it is specifically for kind of skype calling for podcasting for recording vocals on your desk maybe for, you could maybe use it for gaming um, but uh, it, as long as you use it well it sounds absolutely great so yeah, if you want to get the best out of it, you do have to use it correctly. In my opinion, I haven't shown you the mic yet, have I? So this is this is it. In my opinion, using it correctly means firstly on axis with the capsule because the capsule is this way up inside the microphone. I don't know if you can actually see the capsule in there, but you see sort of images of it being used like this and things like that. The capsule is there. So you want to use it directly head on with the capsule, which means using it like this and that is about the right kind of distance to be using a microphone like that anything close up like that as you may have heard in the audio test can sound really nice but it does tend to uh, cause a lot more issues with sort of plosives and uh, weird sort of artifacts that you might get uh, where the levels just kind of peak and go a bit out of control so yeah about 15 centimeters away from the mic the logo is at the front that is the front of the microphone don't use it at the back because this is a cardioid polar pattern which means it kind of picks up sound from around about this if i hold the mic this way it picks up sound from something like this around the microphone and rejects sound more from here and um therefore yeah from about 15 centimeters that's how you want to use the microphone this has got a kind of uh it's, it does have a limitation. I mean, with all mics like this, with all these kind of budget microphones, you realize that they do have limitations. And the A700 really, compared to other mics I've tested, such as the Fifine K669, um, they do, it does sort of fare really well in this regard. But it does have this kind of weird thing where I, I did a kind of peak test on the audio test there, where when you literally shout into it, where it suddenly has a really high peak, it just breaks completely and the audio just cuts out. I don't know whether that's a problem with the analog to digital converters, the general sort of sound device in the, in the mic, or I just don't know where that problem lies. It, any kind of decent mic or you know, really good mic and really good preamps would just distort. I mean, yeah, they, of course you can't push a mic higher than a peak level of zero dBFS, but it will, it will cope with it. You know, you'll get a messy, noisy sounding signal, but it won't just cut out. This does do that. It's not a big deal because you just need to control how you use it. And it's a limitation. It just reminds you that you are using a budget mic. But for God's sake, I mean, for £30, 
it really does sound rather good. Okay, what about functionality? Well, as with all USB mics, they present themselves as a sound device, as I mentioned this. The A700 presents itself as a 48 kilohertz 16-bit device. You can't change that, it's fixed like that. It comes up as a, as a product that just says USB, what, uh, let me have a look, what does it say? USB Mic 1. Now, it would be nice if that was a little bit more, a bit less generic, maybe said Alvoxcon or A700 or I don't know, something like that. But it doesn't make any difference. You know, it works absolutely fine all the same. It makes no difference to how well it works. So yeah, it's fixed to 48K 16-bit, and that's absolutely perfect for video work. It's pretty standard across the board. It's standard. It's, it'll be what your uh, sound card is using natively on your laptop or on your, your PC or your Mac. You know, if you haven't changed anything, it's likely to be using that sort of uh, that level, possibly 24-bit, but don't worry about the fact that this mic isn't 24-bit. Trust me, a mic of this type, the preamps in this are not going to be of a suitable quality to to be able to work in 24-bit. Anything, there'll be noise well beyond being able to take advantage of 24 bits of uh, level, you know, on, on, the, on the mic like this. It's just, yeah, 16-bit is perfect for this and it's absolutely fine. So yeah, please don't think, oh, it's not 24-bit, I want it to be 24-bit. Totally unnecessary, right? There's no volume control on the mic itself. The uh, Fifine that I reviewed has had a nice volume control on it. That's fine to have that volume control and it is really useful, but it has to be implemented correctly by the manufacturer. And the problem with the Fifine, as I noticed, was it was more of a simple sort of digital reduction after any problems have taken place. So a volume control on a mic is to prevent any sort of peaks and overshoots and distortion. But the Fifine was just reducing the volume after all that had already happened. So you still got a distorted signal, you just got a lower level distorted signal. So it would be nice to have one if it was correctly implemented, but this, this mic is just keeping it really straightforward and simple. All right, it, it does show up as a device on your operating system, no problem there. It would be nice if it had some kind of little light on it, maybe just an LED or maybe one of these could be a band with some sort of light on it to show that it's powered up and ready to go. Not necessary again, but would be nice to have that. Uh, what else have we got? No, yeah, please, if you, if, if they, you know, if Alvox Tom were watching this and were to think, oh yeah, that would be a good addition, please don't put any kind of RGB LEDs on here. Don't make it anything flash. The simplicity and nice sort of simple design of this mic is one of the good things. Right, build quality. The mic is full metal construction, so this, gr this grill here is metal. All this body is metal. Can't really hear that from me tapping it there. Yeah, it doesn't really work, but trust me, this is, <laughs> this is metal. These two bands are, are metal, and um, if I take it out of the stand quickly, I will show you the uh, port. The uh, metal build continues down to the USB port, fortunately, which has a nice thick metal surround on it. And uh, yeah, this is good because these kind of things are a point of weakness and um, it's nice that they've continued the metal build right down to the bottom here. As far as, oh, have, we moved, have we moved on to build quality? Yeah, we're on build quality here. So as far as I'm concerned, this USB port, having to plug the cable in like, let's have a look. So I've got my cable here. Having to plug a USB-B cable into here, this is a point of failure. It, if you pull that hard, this is gonna break, this port's gonna break and you're gonna be left with a microphone that you can't use. Uh, this is, you know, it's, it's kind of wobbly. It's not a perfect way to do it, and you will probably, just from moving the mic around, possibly get quick wear and tear on this port. I don't know, I haven't used it for long enough to determine whether that's gonna be a problem. And USB-B is probably the best one you could use because it's pretty thick and pretty sturdy, but I just think that having this as a cable that can be connected and reconnected, uh, sorry, disconnected and reconnected, is maybe asking for trouble. The uh, Fifine mic had a permanent cable going into it, and I thought that was probably the best choice because although, yeah, that could fray and that could cause problems, at least then you haven't got this problem with a port. Now, an ideal scenario could be for them to recess this USB port so it ends up with the, this actually going into the mic itself, you know, something like this, and that could then proved that could then sort of be supported. So if it got a tug, you'd only really be tugging on 
this section. That could work okay. Alternatively, XLR connectors would be ideal, but that would drive the cost of the microphone up, and it's not suitable for a data connection anyway, which this is, of course, as it's a USB port. Right, design-wise, well, when I first saw a picture of this mic, I thought it looked a little bit tacky, actually. I thought it looked a little bit glossy and maybe a bit plasticky and stuff like that. But it's much, much smaller than I thought it would be. When I got it out of the, um, when I got it out of the box here, it sits really nicely in the box. It's just sat there, sort of in ready, sort of presenting itself to you. The out-of-box experience is good, and it's, I, I really like it. It's got a certain charm to it, and particularly is the fact that all this that looks like it could be plastic is not. And as soon as you get your hands on it, it is nice, and because of that, it, it immediately sort of draws you into the design of it a lot, lot more. It looks really tidy on a desk, and I do like it um even though yeah i think the pictures on like amazon and stuff don't really do it justice it's personal taste of course what you like what is maybe completely different from what i like but i i think it looks pretty decent the writing on the body here the alvoxcon name it sounds to me like a pharmaceutical company but this name is not too prominent they haven't splattered stuff all over it and um they've kept it nice and kind of minimal and simple which is good right this the, the Extras that you get with it, well, you get a USB cable, you get your your USB um, A to B type cable, so we're talking about a USB A type to a USB B type, just in case you're unfamiliar with what those two are. It's about a 1.5 meters in length, that's standard stuff. You get a little tripod here, and these are these are extras. Anything with a product of this kind of at this price point. The extras are really just basic stuff. I mean, I don't know how long these will last. They don't feel particularly sturdy. Um, it does the job for how long? Who knows? This is uh, where the mic actually attaches. This comes off, the, comes off the tripod stand. This is actually a non-standard fitting size, or at least it's not the same as my, my Sennheiser mic that I, I put on a, a shock mount. Um, maybe theirs is non-standard. That'd probably be more, more likely, wouldn't it? But this just attaches to here like this nice and straightforward and then you you know you just pop your mic down like this and uh, well try and get it so that this is at the front of course you need to use that from the front and you've got yeah i mean the extras are okay you also get a foam windshield with it as well well this is foam works great just slots on the top very snug very neat and that works brilliantly glad they include that that's a nice extra it's just a bit of foam can't go wrong with a bit of foam but the tripod they're always a bit feeble and weak and it'd be nice if they were those those stands were just a little bit better but this is a budget product it's 32 pounds you know <laughs> you're not gonna get the world for 32 pounds so in conclusion as i say for the money this is superb the capsule in these it, they sound really, this sounds really similar to other mics I've tested at a similar price. For all I know, the capsule that they use, the mic capsule, when I talk about capsule, I'm talking about the actual bit you can see behind the grill there, the actual microphone bit itself. The, uh, when uh, they make these, maybe they make, maybe they use the same ca capsules across a number of different microphones, which is why they all sound fairly similar. In which case, some of you might be saying, well, which one do I go for then? Well, it comes down to really looks then, because, <laughs> you know, is this one that you think looks nice? Is it gonna suit the person you're buying it for? Maybe would they think it looks nice? Do, do you think this one looks the part over something else? Do you prefer black? Do you prefer silk? You know, really there's not a huge amount of difference in them at the same kind of 30, 35 pound price point. But this is a good bet. It's simple, not much to go, not too much to go wrong on it. You can detach the, the cable. Some people might like that. Um, uh, there's no volume control on the mic, but again, you can al you alter your volume in the operating system and that works better than other volume control on mics that I've used. For $32.99, this has great audio. And um, yeah, I mean, just comes down to which one you like the best. This is the Alvoxcon A700. Hope you enjoyed this review. And if you've got any questions or any comments, if you've bought it, if you've bought a different one, you think it's better, whatever, put them in the uh, comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.